watching all the, the England boys and watching Neymar and, and all of that and I just was just dying to get on then um yeah he called me and I was just like couldn't stop smiling like, it's crazy. How was that feeling like when he makes the call and he's like yeah dog <laughs> so, like what's going through your head like how are you feeling in that? Like, Hi guys, DJ Kasinga here. With Dom Solanke, we're doing Perspectives. With Rising Ballers. Today we're linking up with AFC Bournemouth bagsman Dom Solanke. Still only 24, Dom's had a crazy career so far. He started his career off at Chelsea, where he was a standout player at youth level. He won the Under-20 World Cup with England and was named Player of the Tournament. He left Chelsea and went to Liverpool in 017, where he learnt from the likes of Jürgen Klopp, Mo Salah and Roberto Firmino. Now at AFC Bournemouth, he has been on fire this season. He scored over 20 goals and is the second top scorer in the league. We are gassed to be linking up with him today and getting his perspective on the journey so far. Alright Dom, you joined Chelsea at under eights, how did that come about? Well I was born in Reading so I was playing like the Sunday league round there. Um, just yeah, played with my, my older brother's age group sometimes and then I played a couple of years at Southampton and Reading, but like they was all at the same time sort of thing, so mm -hmm. I didn't really like sign anywhere. Then Chelsea came about as well, so I was like, yeah, just training with all of them. But then obviously it came to the, the age where you had to sign like actual little contract thing. You picked Chelsea? Then, yeah, I picked Chelsea. The Liverpool move, how did that come about? Can you talk us through that then? So yeah, obviously, um, I was at Chelsea for, for quite a while and um, I ended up not, not ending up staying there. So um, yeah, I had a, a few options where, where I was thinking about going and, and yeah, at the time I just thought Liverpool, they was, they was playing a lot of, of young players and, and their squad looked good, the manager was good and, and yeah, that excited me. So yeah, I decided to go there. Uh, Firmino, Coutinho, um, yeah, just a lot of players and obviously Klopp was the manager, um, great manager as well. He's pretty much everything you see on TV, so like invested in, in the team. So like, like say you lose a game, like he will, he will feel it. So like he's literally like one of the, the players really and I think that's important because like, he has all the players, players fifth. She loves his, or she, they call it the Klopp hug, so. <laughs> Yeah, like it's nice that after, especially after like big wins and stuff, like it's always the one like hyping everything up and that. So Chelsea and Liverpool, obviously they're massive clubs. What would you say are differences between the two then? It's difficult because they're both obviously, obviously top teams. Mm -hmm. um, I think Liverpool probably is a bit more worldwide. So the fan base is like when you go on tours and stuff, it's just crazy. Like, um, like mentally you could go across the world and it will be like, we were in Liverpool, so that's quite mad as well. But um, yeah, obviously Chelsea was was I was there for so long, so that that meant a lot as well. But um, yeah, they're both both top clubs. So you share change rooms with top players. You share change rooms with Drogba, Costa, Salah, Firmino. Have you got any stories to share? Like, any madnesses? Like <laughs> obviously we keep it PG, but yeah, any madnesses? Nah, not really. Costa was was a character. Like yeah. he was. It was so fun to be around just every day, just, just always joking about. But I um, like was doing so well on the pitch as yeah, well. Yeah, so sure. like it was good to see that that someone's got that, that energy on and off the pitch. And then, um, yeah, obviously, Drogba, probably my biggest biggest idol. Um, so to be able to to train and, and share the pitch and stuff with him would, was, was mad as well. No. So obviously you share the change room with Salah, Firmino, all of that all of the top guys in like European football right now. What would you say you took from them? Like why are they there? I think just their effort, like every day they're putting in putting in hundred percent. Like even if they didn't have a good game, they will always be like thinking about what they could have done better. So say they missed a chance, like the next week they'll be be like working on, on that. Or if they're just their weaknesses, they'll be working on it then just even like the gym, like you'll go in the gym, you'll see them them putting in the work in there as well. So early in the season, you described yourself as being in the best frame of mind you've ever been in. What's working? I think just confidence and, and run of games. Like obviously the last few seasons before, mm -hmm. the last two seasons, I was a bit in and out of the teams playing here and there. It's hard to, to get like a, a run of, of momentum and that. So. For me to play constantly the last two seasons just 
just helped me and I just got my confidence back from that. Would you say that's the most important thing in football, like just the run of games, the consistency over and over again? And yeah. That's where you're at. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think confidence is just as important as, as ability in football. I think um, if you're not confident, then it takes a, a big toll. So I think, yeah, that along with, with just playing games, learning, just making sure your body's right and fit, like all just gels together. So level with the people now. What is the hardest thing about being a football player that people don't get to see? I think just the expectations, really. I think like there's a lot of things that you can't do when you're when you're in a foot, football environment or or away from football. And I think it's just hard sometimes to to not be able to to like I don't know if you wanted to attend your friend's party or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You obviously can't do that. You need to make like a lot of sacrifices and. A lot of times the people won't really really realise how much you, you actually sacrifice. Just you gotta make sure that you're always eating the right. What's your cheat meal? Probably say a pizza, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Domino's yeah, Domino's. Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue always base. A... Oh. Yeah. Well what are you getting on the pizza though? Barbecue Don't say base. pineapple in Pe that. No, 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 no. That's dead. Pe pepperoni for me. Nah, Garrow, Garrow. Yeah. All you man out there that put pineapple on pizza are you're dead, it's weird. All right, so cool. What young players coming up in the game right now are you feeling? Uh, for me, Foden. Like, obviously he came, he's a bit younger than me, but he came uh, some of the, the age groups at England. And like, he was just, you could just tell that like, he was different. Like he's short, he was short, like even at the time, like he was obviously when you're in youth football, when you're a bit younger, Actually, it's quite difficult, but like he just, he's just like fearless, and I think what he's doing at City is, is yeah. um, like mad, and I think he's gonna go on to, to do big things. Now, ask, um, have you got any advice for footballers out there who have been released or they're struggling mentally? Just keep going. Like in times, especially in football, there's always gonna be like tough times, but the good thing about football is it could just change, like instantly. You see a lot of players playing in. In lower leagues, then they they get a move to to a higher league, and then one season, and it's just they could be like in the prem. So I think just just keep going and, and believing in yourself. I hear that. All right, cool, Don. Talk to me. How was the U20 World Cup? How was the whole experience? Yeah, it was mad. Like we was literally there for I can't remember how long, but like weeks. We went to um, a camp before where we trained for a bit just to get get used to the weather and, and all of that and then we went to the tournament and there was like so many games game after game and like when you get to the end and you see that you could be in the final it's like mad we could actually win this yeah then um yeah we went on to win and like still to this day that's probably one of my biggest achievements and you won the golden boy out there so talk me through that that's the player of the tournament isn't it yeah yeah so, like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so you won it out there so talk me through that like did you expect it did you expect to win it based off your performances or was it like uh, welcome and surprise. I was actually going for like the golden boot, which yeah, yeah, yeah. was was top score. That was like my main goal. But then, um, yeah, it got to the point where I was I scored a couple of big goals in in the big games, and mm -hmm. I was having some good games. And I think um, I think I was a couple of goals behind the the golden boot. And obviously, I knew that when I didn't score in the finals, so I was a bit upset. But then um, the woman came up to me and was like, um, "You've won the golden ball." So I was like. Right, yeah, it's, it's even better. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's even better than the, the golden beat. So yeah, I was, I was buzzing with that. So, so you've gone through the different age groups of England, 15s all the way up to 21s, and then the big one, senior debut versus Brazil. Talk me through that. That is a madness. <laughs> yeah, it was literally a madness. Um, was actually I was away with the 21s. We had a away game in Ukraine. Then um, we was coming back to to England. We was going to the actual game like at Wembley to watch England versus Brazil. And um, I had a good game in in Ukraine. Scored. Then um, yeah, the, the opportunity came. I think uh, yeah, Southgate called the under 21s manager and um, said that they wanted me to to go and join them. So I went and trained with them for a few days and and did well in training. Then um, yeah, it came to match day and I was in the squad and I was just like praying to just get on the pitch like I was watching watching all the, the England boys and watching Neymar and, and all of that and I was just, was just dying to get on then um yeah he called me and I was just like couldn't stop smiling it's crazy 
How was that feeling like when he makes the call and he's like, yeah, dog, yeah. So, like, what's going through your head? Like, how are you feeling? In like, to be fair, I probably wouldn't even say no. It's just so much like, adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. Like, just to, to get on a pitch, like, I've seen a massive stadium. My mum and my family have followed me throughout my whole career. So for them to see a moment like that, especially, obviously we grew up in England. So for me to represent the, the senior team, uh, yeah, probably they're as, as happy as I am. You won the UEFA Youth League with Chelsea under 19s. Talk us through that. How was that like, the whole experience? Yeah, that experience was was crazy really because in, in the group stage, you went, like with the first team, so you mirrored their um, schedule. Yeah, their schedule. So you'd play the game, then at night time you would watch at like, the first, first team. team. So like, the whole the whole experience of that was crazy. Then um, yeah, I think the semi final and final was all like we flew to to another country and it was all all the games played at once. So yeah, it was just like a, a happy camp. And then when we won, obviously it was it was amazing as well. Did you guys play in the final? Draw. Uh, Shakhtar. Yeah, that team was good to be fair, but um, yeah, our team was just yeah, different. Yeah, <laughs> Jeremy Boga, Charlie Colkit, um, Masonda, Izzy Brown, just just name literally the whole squad was just like stacked. And um, what are your short and long term goals? Um, short term, obviously, to get back to the Prem. I think that's um. Yeah, that's, that's all I want to do right now. Uh, hopefully we can get promoted this season, which will be really good. And then long term, just, yeah, have a good good career in the Prem and, and hopefully on an international level as well. Yes, guys, this is a wrap. Football perspectives, crazy stories, crazy career. Love for jumping on, bro. Appreciate it. Right.